It is uh, 10 hours and 42 minutes into the day of Tuesday, March 16th, uh, 2021. It is my brother's birthday. Happy birthday. And surprisingly enough, package arrives. And unfortunately, I found my scissors. That means we can open the package without delay. Well, a little bit of a delay because uh, it takes a while to rip open the package. Once you make the first cut, sometimes it requires a second and third cut, as is the case here. Oh, the dreams have been interesting, along with the thoughts, along with the thoughts that come along with the dreams. So let's see what we have here. Check out the uh, wrapping. It's another box like this. Ah, nice. What I was waiting for from one of the other other, other companies. That does the shipping. It is a two terabyte hard drive. So this should be interesting to see how this ends up working out. Uh, it's going to take me a while to work on my. Um, it's going to take me a while to work on the uh, storage space on the on the on my on my network. So this is where this is going to be. And it should be interesting to see how this ends up. Uh, fitting in with the system. You should give me a lot more space than I currently have. Because I was running out of space on the network. That's when I ended up getting the uh, two terabytes from uh, from Google. I still haven't employed the four terabytes I have that had, that had come in uh, for the portable office. Uh, and this is going to go into the network itself, though. Uh, and add uh, another two terabytes to the network. So I'll have more than enough storage space. Anyways, uh, that's going to be it for now. I'm going to go back to bed. So the dreams are kind of interesting. Uh, I am taking some time down uh, over the week. Because the body is uh, pretty much fatigued. And sometimes you do need to take a you do need to take a vacation, although the mind continues working even though you're not really doing anything physically. You just kind of think through things, and that kind of uh, uh, is the way things go. <laughs> well, with less than an hour left of the day of. Uh, uh, Wednesday, March 17th, uh, 2021. It is 22 hours and 54 minutes into the day. And this is going to be the only vlog part section for the day. Uh, when you sleep a lot, because your body is exhausted, and every once in a while that does happen, well, every once in a while, who are we kidding? It happens significantly. When you're doing an all-nighter at least once a week, if not more, uh, it's going to knock you out. <laughs> and that's what happens here, is that it knocks me out. It knocks me uh, uh, until next Tuesday. And uh, <laughs> it, 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 it will result in a lot of sleeping. Uh, but that being said... Um, the dreams that I've always have been, have been having are pretty interesting ones. They're along the same lines as, as, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily anything new. They're, the changes are subtle, and it's an indication that I'm back along the path, I'm walking along the path. And I said, it does take a while to get from, some points take a while to get to. I mean, to get to, under, to, get to my understanding on atmospheric physics. And what's going on it took me close to 10 years of doing just sort of uh, going outside, sitting and watching the weather. 
uh, while I was comparing it to what I had on the satellite view. And there are so many different satellite views you could actually have uh, that it, it does take a while to sort of figure out which ones work the best in terms of what you're actually seeing and give you the best overall view. And then you have to go out to other sources to do other, you know, deeper testing, deeper research, like looking at pressure within the atmosphere. How does pressure behave? How does the atmosphere behave? Is it is it thermodynamics? Is it fluid dynamics? Or is it something else? And it turns out that it's something else. It's a combination of fluid dynamics. Is it a combination of fluid dynamics, thermodynamics, and um, uh, and uh, go rigid body mechanics? In, in many cases, it doesn't behave like a, a a fluid. It actually behaves like a solid, and you can have ridges and ripples in it, just the way you would have a boat floating through water. Clouds will do the same thing: is that they'll behave as a solid mass. And as they move forward, it's like, you know, here's cloud moving forward, and what you see in front of it is this wake, uh, uh, just the way you would have uh, uh, in, in front of a boat as a boat is moving through water. You see there's something around the front, like a, oh, almost like these waves that ripple out. And then also along the sides as well, you'll see that this is not simply a phenomenon of simply dropping a rock in the water and seeing the waves go out. In a, in a circular section, this is something in the water, but as it's moving forward, because you don't have the single drop, you now have some, you know, are, in terms of the geometry, are the conic sections. Then you get, you get something, you get something uh, along the lines of what called pressure ridges. But of course, the meteorologists don't see this, because they're not, meteorologists do not study atmospheric physics. They are stuck within uh, the, the the their historic field of meteorology. Uh, it is from the 1800s. It hasn't, in terms of the theories and ideas, particularly its approach to climate, has not changed. So a large chunk of what you're seeing with with the whole thing of climate change, this is based off of science from the 1800s. It's not based on anything new. But for many people, it, it, get, it keeps them their job, it gets them sort of notice and fame and whatever. And there are people who want that. There are others who don't really necessarily care about that and they're more about the research and you're not going to really hear about them because uh, they're not interested in making a name for themselves. So they stay more quiet, they're, they're more reserved. Uh, they're t t t they tend to be in crowds to be more of the introvert, uh, rarely speaking, or getting involved in conversations, uh, they're more laid back. And this is kind of the way things go for myself, and we're talking about the different points along the path. In that it does, and this is where I am now, I'm between points. I've left one point just recently, and I'm moving to whatever my next point is going to be. I have no idea what it's going to be, but I do know there's going to be a next point. Uh, and I'm moving to it. I'm moving to the next point, but the thing is, that just simply means walking. It means, you know, one foot in front of the other. And nothing nothing really exciting, exciting happens as you're walking because the focus is on the walking itself. So it becomes mundane. It becomes routine. Speaking of which, uh, I'm doing this, uh, well, I'm back to my old routine, uh, my standard routine, which I don't necessarily talk about as much. I'm, I'm doing my YouTube stroll. I just finished uh, It's Our Life. Started off with the Yowie Vlogs, and now I'm heading over to Leroy's. And I'll continue on the path uh, uh, for the rest of the night. I do have enough content now uh, in the media room, uh, research desk, that... Uh, I can spend uh, the entire night watching uh, the YouTube stroll and watching the various goings on around uh, around it. So I think I'm going to leave this here. Yeah, it's only about six minutes for today, so maybe the 17th will be merged into one of the other days. That happens. This is not enough content for one day. So uh, it's usually I try to keep the vlogs between 20 and 25 minutes. 
And so sometimes if there's, uh, you know, something a little extra, you tack it on at the end, and that's kind of how things go. Anyways, uh, we will see you uh, in the next segment. So until then, take it easy. Well, it is uh, 22 hours and 7 minutes into the 18th day of uh, March, uh, 2021. It's a Thursday. And I am coming to you for the first time. There are sometimes, there are some days where where the situation is, uh, there's only one vlog for the day. There's only one segment of the vlog because uh, that's all I've actually had time for because uh, I'm kind of just now starting my day. I was out with my parents earlier, but... Uh, uh, to, for dinner, uh, and we do uh, a prayer service together in terms of uh, uh, what we have in terms of live streaming. We have that, uh, and that's about two hours, so I don't get back till about ten. And I'm just now, sort of starting my day, went through the a number of uh, 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 sort of my checklist of what I have to do for today. Uh, I rarely ever get through the checklist. You always be. I'm always optimistic about it, but at the same time, I never get through it. I never get through the the actual list. Uh, but that's okay as long as there is some progress within the the end of the day, within the end of the week. Uh, I'm happy with that, and there's no other issue to it. Uh, again, once again, in the background, I've got my own vlogs in the background, watching myself. Uh, I do, uh, I see that I'm doing a better but better job. Things There are days, particularly when I'm tired uh, and I'm heavily fatigued, if I'm in the burnout stage, that's when things get very slow, very cumbersome. And I said, why, why film that? Because it's a vlog. It's a vlog. You're getting me at all situations. You're getting me, and you get to see the frequency. I mean, I'm doing all-nighters on a weekly basis. And sometimes there's more than one all-nighter, and when that happens, when you see that sequence, uh, I've had a, a couple all-nighters, uh, it does catch up with you in terms of your, your, your ability to think, the ability to speak, uh, how you phrase things. And there are a number of things that sort of come into play when the fatigue comes in, and it's, it's rather heavy. Uh, so as the, I try to demonstrate this, I try to keep this real, I don't cut out my flubs, I don't cut out the yawns, I don't cut out a lot of things that are edited out of vlogs uh, from other people, you know, like, like uh, uh, Our Family Nest or, or, or It's Our Life or Leroy's. There's a lot of editing that goes on. They do really do edit the job, they edit it so, and so that it, it is... It is, uh, the conversation is still there, but at the same time, it's not, ev they're not, you're not seeing everything. You're seeing simply the, we call the positive presentations. You're seeing some of the issues. Uh, enough to get a feel for the, what, 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 what their life is like. But again, it's not a, it's, it, they're not scientists. They're not, they're not putting up a vlog, which is part of a journal. This is, this is part of, this is part of my law. This is part of, my uh, my research log, my research journal, and so uh, if people want to go research who I am, what, what I'm about, uh, and so on and so forth, if, if I'm part of somebody else's research, or they're referencing the work that I do, then uh, you need to have that information out there. You need to have some way to find out who the person is, uh, how they come to the conclusions that you came to. In other words, the deep research that's needed to sort of get into something is there with me. I'm following what I preach. I'm practicing what I preach. That is, you have to be more of, you have to be more circumspect in terms of uh, making sure that your your presentation is reality. In other words, you don't cut things out simply because it doesn't look good or or or, or, or 
it doesn't uh, sound right or whatever. You, in other words, you don't go back and correct your mistakes. You leave the mistakes in there. And just to correct them at another time because this is this is what a notebook is. This is what a uh, this is what uh, a, a, a vlog for the scientific pr perspective. This is what it is. That's a hiccup there. <laughs> a little bit of a burp. Gas within the system. Uh, and this is a necessity for most researchers. But they should. But the most researchers don't do this. They don't have vlogs and don't. They're not exposed. To it. It's difficult to find out who they are, what their personalities are like, because only the professional side comes out, and is only in papers that are peer reviewed. In other words, they want to make sure they're putting their best foot forward. Uh, and so it's you have to do a deeper dive in order to really figure out who the person is, why they're writing what they're writing, why they, or or why they're saying what they're saying, how they come to their conclusion. In other words. To do, go in and do the background research, the deep dive research that is necessary, uh, these factors aren't there. And this is what I said before about, we're talking to, talking to my dad about, uh, about, uh, the newly found Dead Sea Scrolls. And the thing is, those are the things I'm going to be putting on my, on my shelf. I put it on my shelf because, yes, it's interesting. But I want to wait and see what's produced. And a large chunk of my my questioning is to dig further and to dig deeper. And as one I suspected is that the Dead Sea Scrolls match up with the Septuagint. But the thing is, what happens? You ask the question. Okay, it matches up with the which Septuagint? Are they all the same or they're different? And my dad said, and this is what I had found that they were all different. So the thing is, what happens, what you're seeing, the conclusion, because these Dead Sea Scrolls are different, you're seeing different sects within the Jewish community, uh, within the history of, uh, of the Jewish people, uh, that there wasn't, a, it was called, we're calling them a Judea, we're, we're calling it Judaic, we're talking, calling it Jewish, but they were far more than that because there were, were a number of groups uh, that actually had uh, their own perspectives. And then the thing is, you also have to consider, well, when they come out with these texts, how do they produce the text? And the thing is, are there, is there any fudging? In other words, do they give you the text as they found it, without any ed any uh, editing, or without any enhancements, or embellishments? You know, because this matters. If you enhance something, if you embellish something, that's not real data. That's an interpretation of the data you found. And the thing is, as a researcher, you want to see the original. You want to see, okay, what did you find? And again, what happens is the reason why you want to see what they found is about perspective. You want to see from your own perspective what was there. How did they come to the interpretation? How did they come to... Because what happens? Translation is a form of interpretation. The words you choose in terms of how you translate something depends a lot on your experience, and you may not be exposed to certain experiences, and, and that, that, let's say, the, something, they are talking about something. If you're outside that experience, you're outside that culture, you don't understand the culture, then your translation and how you, you interpret that translation may be incorrect because you're missing or you're misinterpreting what's being said. And then, actually, go talk to any biblical... Choose five different biblical scholars. Ask them their opinion on one particular... Choose a phrase within the, within the Bible. Ask them their opinion. You'll get five different answers. Why? Because everyone has their own interpretation. Everyone has their own understanding. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, that they're all correct. They can be partially correct, fully correct, you know, uh, uh, probably correct. They can be... Completely incorrect, <laughs> depending on, on on how they see it. And this is this is sort of the nature here is that the the going through the bits and pieces, going through and finding all the chunks and bits, takes a long time because you have to go through people's perspective to get to the original. And when you're working backwards, like they go, you're going from the front to the back. So the front is. Is the top? This is what does a layer. 
as we talk, talk about the deep dive. The surface layer is the initial information. These are what you find in articles and papers and so on and so forth. And the thing is, if you're working on articles and papers, and you don't go any further than that, articles and papers, and what you find in the news and the media, you're only at the surface. It doesn't matter how many, how many people you talk to, it's all at the surface. It's not until you go going to do the background research and who, who these people were, how they wrote the stuff, what their influence was, in other words, doing an author study. That's when you start getting down into the deeper dive. That's when you start getting into the deeper dive. But that takes an enormous amount of time. It could take a couple months or a couple of years. I mean, the thing is, is that I've had stuff that sat on my shelf for years. I found a piece of information, went through, some, went, went through uh, uh, an archive I had found, put the stuff, went, went, read through everything, uh, watched the, the lectures. Uh, some of them, well, the average lecture was three hours in length. And then I went back and put it on my shelf. I said, okay, well, that's, that's interesting. And as I was doing sort of an indexing of the different things I had found, I was on something else. And as I began doing the indexing for something else, I ran into some of the stuff I, I had put on the shelf years ago. So in other words, you're collecting and then you're organizing. You're collecting and then you're organizing. You're collecting and you're... That's the general pattern. And a lot of times, you, it's not until your library gets large enough that you start beginning to make, make some of the deeper connections. And this could take years, depending on, on, on how many libraries, because like the Dead Sea Scrolls, you could build your entire library on that alone. But if you just do the Dead Sea Scrolls, and that's it, and don't consider anything outside of that, well, you're going to be missing a large chunk of it because, because there could be interconnections with the Dead Sea Scrolls and the archaeology that's done in other areas of science or physics or literature or, or whatever. So what happens is your library has to be broad-based, but at the same time, have enough depth. And that takes time. It's not an easy thing to do. This is not number crunching. This is not data analysis. It's not done by mathematical equations. It's brute force. You have to sit down, go through article after article, book after book, source after source, uh, documentary after documentary, lecture after lecture, and it takes. This is why you spend a large chunk of your time on the couch.